as John Hudson comes on in wearing his beautiful black fedora and his newly painted beard. I can't believe the guy is like almost my age and doesn't have to use hair dye yet. Very disappointing. But I mean, here, here it is as we bring the unbiased UFO report coming on in. And big news coming out of Washington, D.C., John, where mm-hmm. President Joe Biden has given a very, very strong signature, which includes the UFO studies. I know. It's like, pop the champagne. I mean, like, is everyone, like, like properly, like, excited? I mean, this is like, you know, I mean, this is, no? Okay, I, I get it. But no, but seriously, this is like, this is really good because the thing is, is that, you know, this is a huge, a huge piece of legislation. The UAP stuff is just part of it, but there was no issues with it. And so it all went through, it all got signed. And that's so for the first time in history, we actually have legal, right, an actual, an actually legally accepted document in the U.S. government that stipulates the existence and the way to deal with UAPs. That's a big, big freaking deal. Okay, why is this a big deal, John, for those who may not understand? Okay, so forget for a second everything that you might know from your experience. If you just base conversation on what is on the record, okay, that is how a lot of situations end up. And so you have these conversations on the record where if there's never been any kind of official acknowledgement that something ever happened, you can't even bring it into the conversation because it doesn't actually exist yet, right? So by them basically putting into you know legal writing that UAPs you know is, is a real issue and it has to be now it 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 kind of um, it 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 uh, it it you know, it seeds the ground. It basically, it, it opens things up. It, it makes it easier and safer for other people to now start talking about it and defending what they've seen and, and sharing what they've seen because now there is actually this, this real, you know, uh, official, you know, like signed document that, you know, it deals with the issue. It, it, this is, um, this is, this is, this is, this is the UAP problem rubber hitting the road. So with this being signed, what happens now? Well, uh, my guess is for the most part, for the next 90 days, we will all argue and complain with each other over what we think will be in that first um, uh, assessment. Um, and, uh, and there's even some debate as to whether we really will get an assessment after that first 90 days. However, it is after that first 90 days that we then have the, um, we now have the, a position where we can start asking for that for those assessments and we have legal reason to actually demand it because it's actually in the document it's really quite beautiful very nice very nice so if everything goes as planned when are we going to see the startup of this new ufo task force and are we getting any details yet as to what is happening with that future task force? Uh, so no, but to, to the last last question. To the first question, um, I would be shocked if you get anything at all. I will be shocked if we can even find out who's in it. Um, I will be basically what will be happening is is you know if look at it like an iceberg. Right, like like one of those iceberg pictures, where there's like a little bit of ice on top of the water and a whole lot below it. That little bit on top, that's what we're going to be getting. The rest of it below, that's what actually exists, and that's how it's going to be. So, in other words, they're setting all of this up to give us nothing, as per usual. No, more than nothing, but nowhere near what you want. Is the public getting screwed out of this? No, I don't think so at all. Because I think that essentially what the what the U.S. government is doing is doing what is in its best interest, right? And if you happen to be an American, then at some level it's in your best interest. But it's not like um, it's not like the way the U.S. government has handled this has been. Um, um, 
I don't know. I, I, I don't, I don't think, I think basically they're giving us as much as they have to. Um, I, I think there are some people, I'm sure there are tons of, I know for a fact, there are tons of people in the government that believe that a lot more should be shared than it has been. Um, but we have the everlasting problem of, of the fact that it's not, when we say methods, people just gloss over methods like there's no big deal. Methods are a big freaking deal. And, and tools are a big deal too. And the thing is, is that, you know, there are a ton of times where we catch people doing things and we can't tell anybody because the devices we caught them on don't exist. And it's, it sucks, but it's the way it is. All right, let's move on to the Nazca lines because there's new news there. We do have three stories with you. And the third one I want to I want to take some serious time for. But uh, the Nazca lines. What's going yeah. on here? Well, so I it was more it was more that that you know, I, I was excited to you know hear it come up in the in your conversation with your guest tonight and and um you know, the Nazca lines have been coming up lately in conversation because essentially they found some additional glyphs um, that they hadn't found before, which when you see them, you're kind of like, really? Like, how could you not? Like, they're they're big and they're they're detailed. And uh, anyway, not my problem. Um, uh, cool new Nazca lines. But what I wanted to what I wanted to kind of bring up to everyone as well is that is you know this whole question of who built them and why they built them. And I think that I think that I guess the point I just want to make is that I think that now that we are starting to have a better grasp of how far back humans go and and how advanced Neanderthals and Denisovans actually were and the fact that we were cohabitating and the fact that there have been, you know, semi-intelligent, semi-advanced, you know, hominids roaming around for a long time, that we need to start looking at, you know, pre-flood coastlines to determine what was connected and what was built and why it was built. And I think the Nazca lines are a great example because if you drop the ocean over there, you know, 500, 1500, 2500 feet, depending on the area, you will find that the, the Canary Islands end up being part of a land bridge that leads you right to the Nazca lines. I mean, like, like it's like a march. Like you just go, doop, 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 doop. I have a picture of it. I'll show you. And you just boom. So it's like it's like a map. It's it's like Google Maps. Here, this way to Nazca Lines. It's crazy, but you got to drop the ocean quite a bit. Now, the last time the ocean was that low, I I don't know for sure, right? I know it was a, I know it was at least, uh, at least thirty five thousand years ago. Um. So, um. And I'm not saying that this hypothesis is right either. What I'm saying is that, that now that we have a, a wider view of, of how long humans have been operating on this planet, we need to take those new glasses and relook at old problems like the Nazca lines, because I think we're going to start seeing new solutions. Are you still a believer or what do you believe in, in what they were drawing in the lines? You know, because, I mean, for them to draw everything from cats to aliens it looked like they were putting out a signal to something off world. It was CE five with finger paints. Is that what you think? Yeah, I really do. Now, do I, do, does it necessarily mean they ever got an answer? I have no idea. I have no clue whether it was ever, but it was ever, you know, um, so, you know, symmetrical, you know, communication. But I think it's pretty much safe to say that whether they thought they were communicating with a, a got with entities in the sky or entities in the stars, those pictures were communication tools meant for someone to be seen from way high up. Now, it's also possible they was for their own ancestors as their own spirits went up into the sky. That's possible too. There's all sorts of interesting scenarios, but clearly those images are drawn for someone who is not on the ground. All right, and finally tonight, and you know what? This one may take up a little bit of time here. But uh, Shirky Poo has it in her headline for the news as well. And I'm going to just kind of read a report here that NASA has made some very interesting hirings in the past couple of days here. They have hired a number of theologians to prepare humanity for alien contact. A priest and other religious experts have been called on to help Earth deal with the possibility of extraterrestrial life. 
NASA is enlisting the help of 24 theologians in a move to determine how different religions around the world would react if contact was made with aliens. The space yeah, agency hired a group of a academics to take part in a program at the Center of Theological Inquiry at Princeton University, to which NASA gave a $1.1 million grant in 2014. Among them is British priest and Cambridge University theologist, Reverend Dr. Andrew Davison, who is helping to advise amid the ever-growing likelihood of discovering alien life. His forthcoming book, Astrobiology and Christian Doctrine, considers the possibility of God also creating life elsewhere in the universe and notes that non-religious people also seem to overestimate the challenges that religious people would experience if faced with evidence of alien life. Carl Pilcher, wow. former head of NASA's Astrobiology Institute, says the theologians were brought in to consider the implications of applying the tools of the late 20th and early 21st century science to questions that had been considered in religious traditions for hundreds or thousands of years. Addressing the idea of Earth as the only planet in space with life on it, he said, that is just so inconceivable when there are over 100 billion stars in this galaxy and over 100 billion galaxies in the universe. Our observational and exploratory space technology is advancing rapidly at present with new tools like the new James Webb Telescope, which launched on Christmas Day, offering a clearer picture of the universe. It has been described as a time machine that could observe distant objects emitting light from further back in time. This is amazing news, John. It is. Very, it is. Very it is. Um and it's, it's hard not to it's hard not to giggle at some of it to for degree like cuz first i'm thinking like oh great you're going to bring a priest like how well does that go with exorcisms you know and um and so but the truth of the matter is is that for for a lot of people for a lot of people if they start hearing about aliens from their local police it's not going to go over well they from the local government not going to go over well hear it from their federal government not going to go over well they hear it carefully from their local religious leaders and it's going to be a lot easier for a lot of people to accept that it's not a bad place for the information to come from. Well, the problem that we have, and we have discussed this on this show for the betterment of a couple of years, and you and I have had some in-depth discussion about this. With more than half the planet being of some religious connotation, everything from Christianity to the very small beliefs, uh, and I don't mean them to be small beliefs, but the small pockets in in Africa and in the jungles of, of uh, uh, Southeast Asia that pray to a deity that we may not even know of. There's over 5,000 deities that are prayed to on this planet. Jainism. And, and the idea that, that we may have the religious community now coming on board with UFOs and more so extraterrestrial life, to me... This is a major problem that we are going to see on this planet because I know people who I've talked to locally here who believe that anything coming from space is demonic. Mm -hmm. Anything coming from space, we can pretty much sound the alarm bells for Armageddon mm -hmm. and Revelation in the Bible. Yep. And it yep. doesn't matter which religion it is. That's a lot of the pictures that we are getting. To a lot of religions, any world event is just a buffet for them to use to then enforce their own doctrine and their own policies of their own belief systems. It's, 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 it's very uh, – it's unfortunately, it's very normal. It's very human for them to do so. But the thing is, is that at the same time um, – you know, for a lot of people, especially when you get away from the larger, you know, uh, religious organizations, you're talk, talking about local, local parishioners, lo lo local, you know, your, your local, your local priest, your local bishop, your local rabbi, your, you know, your local whatever, right? Like those are usually like neighborhood folks, right? Like we know them, you know, we know them, you know, and that's different. And so hearing it from them, uh, that might be a good conversation place to be for it to be going on. Well, I think it's an in-depth conversation that needs to happen, and it needs to happen quickly because so much of this is happening so fast right now, okay? Yeah. 
yeah. and it leads to earlier in 2021 where I started the year off saying and asking, why now? What is the purpose of all of this happening now after decades of cover-up and decades of denial? And now all of a sudden NASA is hiring Spy One Radar Man. Well, whatever it may be, John. <laughs> no, I know, know, I know. I'm kidding. No, can, it could be anything. Make, it could be anything. It could be anything. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it could be anything. But, want, it's a, but yeah. Th there's a serious connotation to this. And that is what are they preparing us for? And what and if they are preparing us and they are willing to go down this this conversation, John, I truly believe that my entire thought process that a date has been set mm. to when contact is going to be made is coming very soon. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, and I think a lot of people are with you. Personally, I'm not, I, I don't, I don't, I don't subscribe to that myself, but I, but I, I've heard that from others. And I think, I think it's a very common, I think it's a very common belief to, to hold. And, and the thing is, is that, you know, I mean, um, you know, there's still a lot of good that can come from all this. I mean, there's still a lot of learning that can be done from it. So, you know, I'm, I'm hoping there'll be some healing from some of all this. Well, and that's what needs to be done. That's what needs to be done. Because if we do not take a bigger look at this and, and check out all of these, these little snippets that they are giving us, they keep giving us, and they, whoever they are, could be the government, NASA, or whoever, they keep giving us all of these little puzzle pieces. And the majority of the UFO field is not putting the puzzle pieces together well the, in fairness the, the puzzle pieces are still um disorganized enough in a way that, that if you did put them together you'd be doing so with a low probability of final configuration right i mean it's like there's a lot there's a lot going on but the thing is, is that we do have interesting models for how some of this plays out right and what what some of what we've seen in other models is that some religions may may not survive some religions may evolve to be more cultural expressions of 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 cultural things and not necessarily structural religions some religions will grow some religions will become multi-planet and some religions will find things on other planets that they will hold as their sacred places and they will begin to migrate to those planets just as we migrate to places and that will eventually happen with humans it will the question is, why now? And we need people to start asking the why now question. Whether, you know, we'll, we'll continue it here on this show. But journalists such as Ross Coltart, television heads, need to start asking that question. Yes. Because the, the entire philosophy is being lined up for us. And the majority are not paying attention. So NASA could come in there and meet with 24 theologians on how ET life is going to affect people on this planet. I mean, if this was any other topic other than extraterrestrial, this would be headline news right across the world. Headline news. Yeah, no, it's being throttled, and and it's being throttled for for what is believed to be a good reason. And you know, honestly, in light of um, in light of some of the conversations I've seen here, that I've had here, that I've had on on Twitter and so forth, I, yeah, I'm not so sure anymore that that that's not such a bad idea. You know, um, it, I think some 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 amount of of uh, of metered dissemination is um is probably a, a good thing because here's the thing is it look a, a bunch of aliens could show up and and tell the world that your religion is wrong okay and could even try to offer proof that your religion is wrong does that mean they're right no does that mean your religion is wrong no your religion is based on faith it's based on your belief system it's your religion no one can take that from you right so believe do what you want like don't, i don't care who 
green, gray, purple aliens tell you your God doesn't exist. If you want your God to exist, if you believe in your God, then by God, your God will exist. And that's your God to do what you want with. And it's like, it's, me, it's insane. It's insane. It, the whole idea that people are, are afraid that, that some other being can come from some other planet and hurt their belief system here, to me, doesn't make sense. That's why we call him the fedora-wearing John Hudson as he comes on in with the unbiased UFO report every couple of nights to keep us updated on what is going on in the world of UFOs. And once again, John, an incredible, incredible job.